What's up YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about one of the rarer fish I have and that is the Apollo Shark. This fish actually belongs to the family Cyprinidae and that is a family of freshwater fish where barbs, minnows, and carps belong. There's actually three different kinds of fish that is sold in the aquarium hobby that resembles each other. These are the Luciosoma setigerum, Luciosoma spiloplura, and the last one is the Luciosoma pellegrini. It is important to know that Lysosoma spiloplura grows to about 12 inches and Lysosoma setigerum and Lysosoma pellegrini grows to around 9 to 10 inches in range. It's also worth noting that Lysosoma spiloplura is more aggressive as compared to the two because of their bigger size therefore they prefer to be alone. While Lysosoma setigerum can live in school. So when you're trying to differentiate between Lysosoma setigerum and Lysosoma spiloplura, these are the following things that you have to look out for. You will notice in the setigerum that there's a line on the side of the fish that is interrupted by markings. You will also notice that the lateral lines of the fish have spots on them. The Lysosoma setigerum also has a very distinct barbel that extends from the side of its mouth, especially during feeding time. With Spiloplura, the fish actually has spots on the side and that forms a line. And the fish name actually means Spilo meaning spot and Plura meaning side. As with Pellegrini, the lateral marks doesn't extend up to the caudal fin. Other species of Lysosoma, but these three are the more popular in the hobby. As you notice, these fish are very fast swimming and they keep on moving around. This behavior makes them a good dither fish. You have to consider that this fish grows to up to 9 inches, so you have to consider the length of the tank. The longer footprint, the better. You will also notice that this fish actually occupies the upper column of the fish tank. Therefore, you have to have a lid as these fish are really good at jumping. Even if they are considered top dwelling fish, they can eat at any levels of the fish tank. And with like any other kind of barbs, they are really good at eating. Being top dwellers, they actually prefer to eat insects that fall into the water. But in the aquarium hobby, you can just give them some flakes, some crisp, frozen food, and they prefer the meaty kind of food as well. So whenever I try to drop some shrimp for the chocolate cichlid, they would try to grab from the fish. Being fast swimmers, they actually enjoy the part of the aquarium where there's a lot of water flow. It's actually really fun to see them eat because they would actually try to catch whatever food is being blown off by the wave maker or the filter. As compared to other barbs, they actually don't eat plants so it's really good to have them in a planted aquarium. They complement the rose light sharks very well. this fish can grow very big and mostly carnivorous, I would stay away from smaller fish such as neon tetras or amber tetras because they might just get eaten. I do notice though that they would school with roseline sharks as mentioned earlier, they would school with rainbow fish and they're actually really good if you have a really shy fish as they're really good deter fish as mentioned earlier as well. I wouldn't recommend keeping this with any slow feeding fish because they are really fast feeders and those fish will just probably get hungry because they're not getting enough food because this fish will actually just snatch the food out of the water real fast. 
With regards to aggression, they would leave other fish alone, um, but you would notice that they would try to attack each other and intimidate each other, but that's pretty much it. This fish will make a good target fish as well. You can put them with more aggressive fish such as bigger cichlids because this fish will school and this will prevent that aggressive fish from focusing on one particular fish. This fish would enjoy a highly exogenated water as they always keep moving and they actually enjoy fast flowing water. Therefore, they would stay close to a wave maker or the filter outlet. They prefer a water temperature of 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. They thrive in a pH that is a little bit on the lower side, that is 6.0 to 6.5. But as I mentioned before, the pH, you only have to keep them constant if you want to keep the fish happy. Realistically speaking, we all come from different parts of the country and different parts of the world and we have different kinds of water pH. Instead of trying to tweak that pH into going down to that level, you just have to keep them constant and the fish will be okay. This fish has the same pattern wherever they are female or male. But to be able to identify them, you have to think that the females have a more rounded belly and the males are more slender in shape. That rounded belly gives the females a more deep body look. Even though this fish is fast eating, they tend to grow slow. Therefore, their lifespan can be around 10 to 14 years as most barbs are. And of course, the lifespan and the growth depends on different factors, including food and water quality. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have learned something from this. Considering that this fish is relatively rare in the hobby, so I hope this video will help you when you finally get a hand on this beautiful, beautiful fish. So I hope you subscribe and you leave a comment in the section below if you already have this fish and what you like about this fish. I would also appreciate if you would share this video to your friends and for anyone who's looking for information about this fish. Thank you guys and fish out.